All right, so now we're going to talk about complex zeros. Solve the equation x squared minus x plus 1 equals 0, just your normal quadratic equation. Okay, so with the quadratic formula, you get x equals negative negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 uh, ac all over... 2a. Okay, so x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of what? Negative 3 all over 2, which goes to 1 plus or minus i radical 3 over 2, which we can write the following way. 1 half plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2 i. That's the formal a plus bi form that we typically write complex numbers in. Okay, I'm writing it this way because I want you to see that there are two numbers. There's 1 half plus the square root of 3 over 2i, and 1 half minus the square root of 3 over 2i. These two numbers down here both satisfy this equation. If you take this 1 half plus square root of 3 over 2i and plug that in for x up here, you'd get it to go to 0. So it's a zero of this function, right? And the same thing with one half minus the square root of three over two times i. So make note of what these two things look like down here though. They're actually conjugates of each other. Everybody remember conjugates? Right? So con a conjugate, if if your binomial is x plus y, then the conjugate is x minus y. Right? If you've got m minus two, then the conjugate is m plus two. It's con these are conjugates of each other. Well, it's the same thing down here. This number and this number are conjugates of each other. Because they're complex numbers, we call them complex conjugates. But I just want you to see that um, they that imaginary numbers, complex numbers, occur in conjugate pairs when they're solutions uh, to equations like this. So that brings us to our first note. If f of x is a polynomial having only real coefficients, and if a plus bi is a zero of your function f, then its conjugate a minus bi is also a zero of f. Everybody with me? All right, so let's try this. Find a polynomial function of degree three with real coefficients, and this function has zeros of negative two and three i. Well, since 3i is a 0, right? Remember that that's like 0 plus 3i. Okay, that's what 3i equals. So since 3i is a 0, its conjugate has to be a 0. So 0 minus 3i, or just negative 3i, is also a 0. It has to be there. Everybody with me? Okay, so we have three zeros. You have negative 2, 3i, and negative 3i. All right, so f of x equals. So remember, if you have a zero, then you automatically have a factor of your polynomial. So if negative 2 is a zero, then x minus negative 2 is a factor, and x minus negative 2 is x plus 2. All right, if 3i is a zero, then x minus 3i is a factor. Right? That goes back to the video on the factor theorem and the remainder theorem. And if negative 3i is a 0, then x minus negative 3i, which is x plus 3i, is a factor. So we have three zeros, so we have three factors of our polynomial. And then we just multiply all this stuff out. So you have, I would do the I would do the complex ones over here first. x minus 3i times x plus 3i goes to x squared um, minus 3xi plus 3xi, those cancel out, and then it goes to minus 9i squared. Everybody see that? And that goes to x plus 2 times x squared plus 9, because i squared is negative 1, right? So that goes to x cubed plus 2x squared plus 9x plus 18. Everybody see how you multiply that out? And this is our polynomial. All right? This polynomial right here has these three zeros, negative 2, 3i, 
and a negative 3i. Alright, so now let me say, uh, let's do part B. Okay, this is part A. But now I'm going to say part B. So here's B. Also, f of negative 1 equals 5. Alright, f of x equals x cubed plus 2x squared plus 9x plus 18. That's one polynomial that has one three, third degree polynomial that has these three zeros. Negative 2, 3i, negative 3i. But is it the only one? Well, no, it's not the only one because go back to uh, when we vertically, when we, when we did vertically stretching and vertically shrinking of graphs. Alright, so then this now, going into part B here, let me scroll down a bit. Going into part B here would look like the following f of x equals. Now, any multiple of this function would still have the same three zeros. Think about that for a second. If we were to multiply this function by any number except for the number zero, uh, then the function would still have the same three zeros of negative 2, 3i, and negative 3i. Right? That would look like this a times x cubed plus 2x squared plus 9x plus 18. All this multiplying by this a here does, that's the vertical sh stretch and vertical shrink uh, translations that we talked about before. right? So, it, But it's not going to affect the zeros of your function because, well, the y value is 0. So 0 times anything isn't going to change its value. All right, so this f of negative 1 equals 5, we give us, we're given that information because that is specific to one particular cubic function, right? This one up here in part a is just, we just found a function that's got those three zeros. But when we put on this f of negative 1 equals 5, then we're looking for a specific one. We want this function to have all those three zeros, but we also want this function to go through the point negative 1, 5. Well, there's only one cubic function that does that. And that's what we're trying to find here in part B. Right? And that's where this A comes into play. Because there are an infinite number of cubic functions here that just have those three zeros. Right? Any multiple of this polynomial will have those three zeros. But now we're trying to figure out which multiple actually goes to the point negative 1, 5. Follow me? All right. Well, how do you think we're going to figure this out? We're, we're looking for A. How do you think we're going to figure out A? Well, we can use this point right here and say when x is negative 1, your y value is 5. Right? So we can plug in negative 1 for all of our x's and 5 for our y. Okay? And that's just an easy equation to solve for, for a. And so 5 equals 10a, so a equals a half. Therefore, f of x has to equal one-half times x cubed plus 2x squared plus 9x plus 18. That's the function right there. That function right there has the three zeros of negative 2, 3i, and negative 3i. And also, if you were to graph this function, it would go through the point negative 1, comma 5. It's the only cubic function that goes through negative 1, comma 5 and has those three zeros. You follow me? So now, here's our last note. A polynomial function of degree n has at most n distinct complex zeros. That means a third degree polynomial, like we just had, could have three different zeros. And it did. It had positive 3i, negative 3i, and a negative 2. Right? So a fifth degree polynomial at, can have at most five different zeros. When we say complex zeros, remember that includes both the um, um, real numbers and the imaginary numbers there. Okay? So a 57th degree polynomial could have at most 57 different zeros, both real and imaginary. Now you could have less than that, but the most you could have is whatever the degree of the polynomial is. Okay? All right. Then we will talk about when you could have less than that um, in the next video. All right? Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.